Hello and welcome back everybody to Moneyball with Paris FC. Yes, playing against PSG, the second biggest team in Paris, of course, today in today's episode. Going to play against them, Dijon, and we're going to play against Monaco away from him as well. Now, there were a couple of poor results, let's be honest about it, <laughs> off camera. Lorient 3-3 draw, 1-0 defeat to Nice. I started to think about, is it the tactic? Do we need to change something? We then recovered with two good results back to back. And a, really, it was a tweak to the team is what really got us going again. So, well, at least for now, let's see what happens in today's episode. If we were to lose to PSG and to Monaco, I mean, I'm in serious doubts about being able to succeed with this team in this tactic. So there's that. The draw in the Champions League, ignore that. I played the B team. They were lucky to even get a draw out of it, to be honest. But, but there we are. Right. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's the first time I've gone into a Paris derby expecting us to get a result. Like, I don't think we should even be drawing this game, really. There's a really good chance we will, but we should be competing. Like, I believe, way more than they would believe, I think in real life, all the pundits, all the all the Paris, even Paris FC fans, I think a lot of people be expecting PSG to get the result, but I believe in this team. We are going to do it. Ray is out suspended. Let's go with a little quick recap on... um. Player performances off camera. So, Bayer has been absolutely brilliant again. Adele, six goals in seven games. World class. Pisticelli has been unreal up front. Seven goals in seven games. And the best goal I saw him score was the ball went down to the right-hand side to, to Bayer. He's whipped the ball into the air. And he's just battered a centre back out the way and just nodded it straight into the far corner. So, he's got the ability to be good in the air as well, which is really, really important for us going, going forward. So, I'm really pleased with how things are looking unfortunately Ray is out the only thing I've noticed is a problem with our team if somebody wide by or Ray is out how we get that next wide player in is really difficult because Contessao, um Madurekie whether we move Adele to the left no matter what I do I feel like there's a massive drop in player quality and I don't really want to move Adele again to be honest so going into the Paris derby I'm tempted to play and Adele from their normal positions, because they, they actually play well in those positions. Do you know what I mean? So it's going to have to be that, I think. We'll do that. I also had to bring on Miguel Crespo off the bench in the last game. We went 2-0 down to Bordeaux. Uh, so not 2-0 down. 1-0 down, 1-1, then 2-1 down. And I had to basically play Gila, a centre-back, with with Rikichi, because all the other combination centre-backs seem to just do absolutely terribly. So... But yeah, I feel like that the best combination was these two at centre back with Crespo as the as the pivot, with Gutierrez left back, and I mean Wilde probably as the as the right back, but it doesn't really matter, I suppose, between him and Willersgaard. They're both as ineffectual as each other by the looks of it. But yeah, that's that's definitely I think the best way for us to go was was those two in those positions. So we've sort of settled on this tactic working really well with this team. The only player I need, I think, for this is Ray. I'll tell you what, that Dragon is really good. I don't know what his attributes are, of course, but he's got to be incredible. Whenever I watch him, he beats players, he stays on the ball. He's got three assists already. I can't wait to play him more often. Unfortunately, suspended for this game. So, I, yeah, so I take it back. If one of the wide players is out, it's okay. It's when there's two. So Ray and Dragon are out. I mean, Dragon's really good on the right, and so is Bayer. So if it's... Ray that's out, whoever goes to the left is a bit in ineffectual. But like if Bayer's out, I don't mind playing Dragon at all. But he does play right back a lot as well because I don't trust the two current right backs that we've got in the in the squad, to be honest with you. But that is going to be your team for the Paris Derby. It's going to be Georgie in goal, Gutierrez, Rikichi, Gila, and Wilde across the back. Crespo, Johansson, Adela's the three in midfield. Conti and Bayer wide. Pisicelli up front. Here we go then. Paris Derby. Come on, boys. I'm absolutely sick to death of losing to this bloody team. Come on, let's do it. We know they're bottle jobs. They bottled it twice in the Champions League to uh, to Napoli. We know they're going to bottle it. Come on, Paris. I always think we left off last time. Yes, good. Okay, here we go. They have got a terrible team out. We've got to win this. I mean, Musial on the left, I don't like because he's really effective in that position. I've said before, he's one of my favorite players in FM to have. I mean, their squad building hasn't been great in this save, but because they've got that, that Mbappe Musiala combination, that's what they need. It makes up for all the other bad purchases. Not bad purchases, but where they could have done better. But if we just keep the ball off them for like 70% of the game, 70% possession, that'll do us a favour. They can't touch the ball, they can't score. 
Conte gets it, plays it to Gutierrez. Goes wide. He's going to cross it in. Surely ref challenge. Bayer goes up for the head and it's headed just over and wide. Matty Cash with the throw in for PSG. To Diego Jota. His uh, cross is blocked. They're going to regain their attack. Gutierrez wins it. Okay, Crespo into Pisicelli, into a doubt. He's got options with him. Play it to Bayer. Is he go through himself? Gets tackled. Bayer gets there. Ah, we lose it though again. And they're going to counter on us. Are they really? Oh, they are. I can't believe it's going to be their highlight. Oh no, Conte's got it back. Here we go. Come on. Rikichi, play it to somebody. Crespo, turn and play. Turn and play. Turn and play. Turn and fucking play the ball, Crespo. Oh, you have plenty of options ahead of you as well, man. I'll tell you what, Crespo. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. When you get on the ball, just just send it as far as you can. And don't fuck it up for us. You know what I mean? Undo everybody else's good work. Nil nil at half time. Okay, let's say dig in. It's a highlight Mbappe. He loses it to Janssen. Janssen wins it, plays it. Oh, he tries to force it through. Mbappe goes through 1v1. Mbappe score. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. I don't believe it. That was a chance, though. Headed away. Neymar's got to it. Adele wins it off him easily because he's a better player, of course. Adele gets it. Goes towards... Oh, I don't believe what I've just seen. I mean, to lose it there is just... How? How can you possibly lose the... Buy with the highlight, plays it across the Conte. Oh, I mean, just what, what are we watching? What are we watching? I've just gone all out of attack, made loads of changes, to be honest with you. I'm absolutely furious with this team. Throw the bottle. I'm deeply annoyed about that. I'm really annoyed about that. 2 0 defeat at home. Toothless. I know we're missing like one or two players. It's just not good enough. There's no excuses for it. I'm absolutely furious with the team. A lot of the big players play shite. And clearly we need a different approach for them specifically. At the, very, at the very, very least, we need a tactic for them only. We need, I might have to go to back three. Back three to sort of just prevent the ball in behind to Mbappe effectively and, and start from there. We can easily play a, a system where we can make sure that our defensive players are on the one side where Musiala is, play a back three, play like a Libro, somebody on a cover duty to stop him getting through. I mean, because... They only scored the second goal in particular. I don't know the first goal was. No, it was the second one. When we had the ball, we turned it over, which, I mean, doesn't happen to almost any other team. And it wasn't like they were pressing us more than anybody else. It was a ridiculous mistake from one of our players yet again. Right, I'll see you in a few days for the next game. I mean, I'm just, I'm done with Crespo. Absolutely done with Crespo. Get out of my team. Johansson, you can go in there. Um, Maduaka, you can just start. I don't care anymore. Um, Dragon, you can go back in the team here. Get yourself on the... Was, uh, I'll tell you what, Conti, why don't you go and play as a 10 instead? As a, sorry, a CDM. Ray is still almost fit to play. In fact, let's do this. Just get the players that I trust more on the pitch, regardless of whether they can play the role. I've had enough of them. Ah, sorry. There's one thing I forgot to show you because I put it on Twitter and I forgot that I hadn't shown it actually in today's episode. So PSG, we all saw them drop points first game of the season, right? And look at this. 1-1 draw. 9-0 win. 8-1 win. 7-0 win. As the manager says, I don't even care what you says. Get the fuck out there, lad. You better make up for this. Well, you can't make up for this. That's the thing, right? You, you've lost the home derby. You've lost the one game we could have won. And Springboard did a, a challenge for the title. You've lost that game. You've ruined it. You bottled it. The best thing would be us losing this game because I would 100% change the whole tactic then and completely rewrite the philosophy for the playing style. Like if, if we win and look good, it's almost worse now because my only current solution to this is to play a completely different tactic for PSG, which sounds stupid, but... And it's annoying because I want us to progress. And I also love the football this tactic plays, but I'm not accepting that. But like, they shouldn't be this hard for us to compete against. Oh, oh, look at us now. Look at this. Through ball across the back line and one-on-one -on -one finish. Oh, look at us. Pisicelli, you were on a 6.4 last game. Just so you know, Gutierrez throws it to Ray. Ray cuts inside. Ray's on a 7.4 because Ray's a good player. Pizzicelli goes to 1v1. Is he going to score it? He doesn't quite get the finish away. He's going to score 35 goals this season regarding... Um, sorry, not including injuries, of course. Like, he's going to get the same amount of goals as Boniface, which is which is good. But that first Paris derby wasn't a lot to be uh, cheering about from him. Okay, Bayer gets it. Shovels with it, plays it to Conti. Conti back into dragging it right back. Gila, Conti. Good football. Like, when we play well, it looks really good. But I, I can't accept it anyone against PSG. And unfortunately, the next game doesn't really make a difference in terms of, like, it's unlikely I'll play something different and it'll work the next game because it's going to be away. If we get in the cup, maybe. I'm not playing this against them again. I've seen enough from it. I've just, I've seen enough. At least right now, 
It's been a couple of years' time when our team's got on significantly better again and there's drops a bit, but not right now. There's too many excuses in, in one-off games that we can make. Ah, well, it was unlucky there, it was unlucky there. The fact of the matter is, this team is shit against PSG. And, they, and they're good against most other teams. Finished second last season. We'll probably finish second again this season. We look pretty good. We, look, we control and dominate a lot of teams. And the worst thing is, right, against Bordeaux in the last away game, Bordeaux aren't a terrible side, you know, in the French League. We looked like we could score in every highlight. We went 1-0 down early, 2-1 down early, and still scored four goals and could have scored 10 without me having to really do anything from a tactical perspective because the team's just that good when it plays the tactic properly. It's defensive, the issue is. But in that game, our XG was low. We weren't really creating that many chances. Definitely no highlights, but even looking at the stats, there weren't many chances either. So it was it was all of those things. And then defensively, we weren't, even, we weren't cut open by PSG. We were caught in transition for definitely one of the goals. And that, uh, that made it worse. Well, we got caught in transition. That was our problem against them. Which is even more frustrating, really. Definitely a change of... I want to change the system where we keep the same playing style, but when they counter in behind, Mbappe's got three players to deal with. Either two centre-backs and a CDM stuck right in front, plonked right in front and not moving, like an anchor, or three centre-backs, whichever way around it goes. I'm not really bothered. But we could... Uh, we're going to be looking at something like that because I'm not accepting this anymore. It, it could be two centre-backs, two pivots, but the two pivots would have to be like proper pivots, like not moving anywhere. Janssen can come off here, or put on Gonsasau. You can come off, Cesar goes up front. We'll change the left back because why not? Late highlight here. They've got another chance. They scored to make it 3-2. It could be an interesting end to the game. Gonsasau gets it, plays it to Ray. Ray into Cesar. Cesar takes a good little touch, plays it out to Ray. Good football again. Look at the football. It's so good when it works. Contasal plays it back to the centre back. Okay, safe retain. That's fine with me. Safe retain. Chevalier, the left back, our youth prospect, plays it into Gila, into Patini, into Byers. He's going to keep this in. He does. Goes across. What a goal that is. 4 1. Adele's on a 10.0. Like, he's generally pretty good, Adele. Cesar wins it. Go on, Cesar. Little youngster up front. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the striker's a problem if we if a uh, injury was to occur. I think Bayer I'd put up front if I needed to next. And I'd probably bring on Dragon to right wing. Or say, well done, lads. Good win for us, as it was. Okay, I'll see you in a few days then for the game against Monaco. There's actually going to be two games between now and then. Another league game as well. That's going to be a tougher game. Good to see. It's Monaco a third, right? So this is a good test. If we comfortably beat Monaco away playing in this style of football, then it shows this tactic is very, very good against 95% of our opponents. But PSG and really good teams in Europe are going to be a problem. So we need to tweak something for those games at the very least. If I'm going to stick to this tactic as an overall tactic, I sort of want to. One, because it works. And two, it plays beautiful football when it does. So we'll see anyway. I'll see you in a couple of weeks then for the game against Monaco. Okay, so off camera, you missed a defeat in the Champions League. And then I made a new tactic for the Le Havre game. I do rotate some players for the Olympiacos game. However, I decided to make a new version of the same tactic. So it's obviously a base 4-3-3 version of what we've been using pretty much. However, we're on attacking mentality. Work ball into box is unselected. And I've rebalanced the, the fullback roles to sort of accommodate the roles we've got ahead of them. We've now got an inside forward on the left with a box of field player. That could be a Roman playmaker maybe as well, but... That's what I've gone with, at least in the uh, first instance. And that tactic played one game against Le Havre, one 4-0. Didn't play amazing football, but it was effective, which is what it might need to be in Europe and against PSG at the very, very least. But we're going to play it again today against Monaco as well. Because like this tactic will work. It will work 100%. But you need to have the best team in the league or close to it, which... That could take us, I don't know, seven years from now until we can get a Mbappe, a Neymar. Do you know what I mean? Players like that. Like Bisicelli is probably going to be a world-class striker in a couple of years. But we'll need that across the whole the whole team. And it's just like, I'm prolonging the lack of success of the team. And you can tell when, when I rotate a few players in Europe and they lose, that is 100% because the tactic needs to be superior to the team to win. Because that team is still a good team, we're still not winning. So... I'm going to change it up a little bit. And we're going to go with this. And uh, I'm going to have to redo what the first team looks like. But Adele's going to still play central field for now. He might have to get moved to the wing at some point. But for now, he's going to stay where he is. and have to learn to play there. 
for us. And yeah, we're going to maneuver the team around so it can be the same as before. So Cold Tick Blazer pivots. I could play Johansson as a pivot, I suppose, if I wanted to. Let's try that for this game. We'll go around the left, by the right, position it front. Everybody else is going to be the same. Chevrolet can play left back, and we'll see how that team goes for this one. But apart from the changes I've just shown you, everything else is exactly the same. Oh, obviously, and I've flipped the, uh, the centre backs here. Many because my, my centre backs are many right footed. I'd rather the right footed one is the one that can bring the ball out from the back. The reason I want him on support duty is I watched one highlight early on of him being in a fullback attack. And while Bayer was going down the line, all three of these were just bombing it in. Of course, they are because they're all on attack duty. So I had to take him down one. And even though he's a complete wing back, just being on a support duty, which means he's not quite as aggressive in trying to like break into the box. He just hovers around here, which is perfect, actually. Now, this side, because Ray goes a little narrow, a little early for my liking, he goes in here. We've now got Chevrolet, or the, whoever the left back is, to now be more on the left hand side. So got underlap here. Uh, uh, we've got overlap this side, underlap the right side. Now, that should work decently well in terms of negotiating the mistakes. We should be getting caught on the ball. And uh, yeah. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. It worked well in a one-off game, but that obviously doesn't mean anything on its own. But playing Monaco, playing a few Champions League games off camera in the next between now and the next episode is going to tell us a lot. But that is my first attempt at transitioning the current tactic into a base 4-3-3 or something more effective like that. We could maybe change the DM to an anchor man, even, but that'll do for now. As the manager says, go and impress me. I like it. Chevalier plays it into Conti, into Orkham. Johansson, so my only concern, I'll ask a great ball through, and I've got to score it, surely does, and it's 1-0 to Paris FC. So my only concern, right, is when you have double aggressive wingbacks, is this, especially one on attack. So you see, because he's a complete wingback attack, he sort of joined the front line there. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, almost in a line, which is okay if he doesn't go and join it, and he doesn't go too aggressive either, because they're going to need to still recycle the ball. So it could have gone in here and here quite easily, actually, as well. But it's from a set piece, so Monaco are a little bit caught trying to like reposition themselves after the set piece. So we can't really take too much from that goal. It may not happen that way a lot because it's they're still transitioning from their sort of set piece roles, their defensive instructions, right? So we'll see how it keeps going from this point forwards. Georgie plays it to Gila right centre back, travels with it, plays it back to the goalkeeper, who plays it long into nobody. Okay. That's not great. And my only problem is having them set back now is they might be slightly less aggressive on their press. The two CMs. So into the striker, Johansson to Adele. Into Johansson. See, I feel like we should make a slightly more aggressive runs on the right hand side there. Ray's got it. That's a great one into Adele. He goes through. Does he score? Probably should have scored. Stays 1 0. Corner. Johansson whips it in near post. Headed away. Chevalier gets it. He's going gonna, gonna to cross this in. He does. Far post to Bayer. Headed towards the goal, Pisicelli, and that almost was a second goal for us. Pretty good XG and shots on target compared to theirs early on here for us, considering we're the away side, and they were above us in the league. And still will be, they'll still be above us in the league now, even if we beat them. So there you go. Ray's got it, plays at the Chevalier on the left-hand side. Gets fouled, continues on, crosses it. I mean, what is that, though, Chevalier? Like, what is that? And this is the thing we need to look out for, right, is good sideline view. So when he's crossing this here, where are the players positioned for when the cross is... I mean, that's a really shit cross. Really poor. But like the right back's here. CDM is there. Let's see what they do with this. Okay, that's a slight issue, but that's going to happen anyway. To be fair, we can't really avoid that too much. They're going to play into it. I don't believe it. I mean, he's offside. We could see that in line there. I do like the sideline camera, to be honest. I really do like it, but... I use it more for tactical stuff. I might keep the rest of this game, actually. The reason I don't like using it like default is because you see how the like bottom bar covers just, just enough to cover up to the pitch line. If the linesman's on this side, it sometimes covers him, and you want to see whether it's going to be offside or not. And some pitches are different, and stadium's right, so you have to keep fiddling with it. So that's why I don't tend to use this view. But we're going to use it here. I'm going to put work into box on, so if he gets there again, he might look to cut it back to somebody instead. Because we do have work ball into box on the original tactic. So we'll, we'll try that. They're going to go long from this. We're going to have players in around the ball straight away though. Golovin gets to it. Plays into Duru. He's onside actually. He goes through. He's going to score, isn't he? Wow. He does. It's 1-1. One, one. It's been a load of changes to the team as this highlight appears. Maduaka wins the ball. 
travels with it away, tries to force the three-ball through. That probably wasn't the right decision there. They're going to have to go long. We're going to win this, surely we do. Dragon gets to it. Is he going to cut this back for somebody while they has it? Plays it into Adele. Got to get that across the goal. You've got to play that. Oh, come on. There was two of you there as well. We're just doing so everything wrong. Everything we're doing is wrong in these in these games. They've got an overload here. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear, dear. And I don't believe that's got in. Frick it, Monaco. Far post. Headed away. Dragon's going to get to this. If we score one, I'm going to stay attacking. Pisicelli, Cesar. Can he play across goal? Is he going to shoot? He's gone for goal. Keeper collects it. And they have it. 2-1 defeat to Monaco. Disappointing. It is disappointing. Really disappointing. I'm not sure we stand. I think I'm going to go back to the original tactic off camera for a bit. And then being very aware that we need to change something for the Champions League. So I might keep playing the first team almost throughout most of the save. But we need to play some of the youngsters in the Champions League to get their minutes up. So I don't want to do it. But from a tactical perspective, I'm probably going to play the first team in the... I'm going to play the first team tactic in the league. And in the Champions League, I'm going to try and experiment with some stuff. Not so much like going to the Benitez tactic and completely flipping the style, but tweaking it to something. Probably a three at the back system or something like that, maybe. I'll have to have a think about this um, and see what I can come up with. But that's going to do the episode. All I can say is a massive thank you to all of you being part of this series. It's a shame we can't get you the win against uh, Paris Saint-Germain at the moment, who are just... It's got 45 goals in 10 games. Like, seriously. They have scored... This is their current goal scored, right? It goes 4 1 9 8 7 1 3 1 2 2 5 1 6 2. Like, they just absolutely destroy everybody. And the new Champions League format doesn't really help us because they get teams that they can beat almost throughout the whole time here. They've got City and Arsenal, both tough games, but they're, one of them's at home. Oh, it doesn't look good. They've won the league this year anyway. It's already over the league title race. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that is going to do it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. And well, actually, let's quickly talk about what we're going to come back for. We'll come back in January, because there, there are talks of a takeover. So we'll come back in January. We'll uh, go through maybe some transfers. We might do some games in January. We'll definitely do the PSG game in that. It'll probably be those three there, actually. It'll be a January transfer window, and then Leon Bordeaux PSG as your three-game episode. That's likely what it's going to be. It could be the Juventus game because we might need to win that to get in. We, well, we probably will do because we've lost and drawn our first two games against two very weak opponents. So it's going to be a big ask for us to get in now. So there you are. But that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.